वेलकम टू आर नेक्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ डॉक्टर कामनी राउस मास्टर क्लास यस यू गेस्ट इट राइट अ न्यू गेस्ट अ न्यू एपिसोड यूव हर्ड डॉक्टर्स साइंटिस्ट ब्यूरोक्रैट्स पुलिस ऑफिसर्स एंड वॉट नॉट बट वी हैव नॉट हर्ड आर्ट यस नॉट आर्ट वॉट अबाउट वीना द स्ट्रिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट वॉट कम्स टू योर माइंड of course veena means suma sudindra yes suma sudindra and tarangini yes you guess that right as well before i talk anything more you will hear it from her herself this is important because she is our very own person from bangalore she has made her name internationally a veena exponent a teacher trainer par excellence enough of recitals will fill this room and what not i would love to introduce her to you people through what she has done because she's got so much of information to give all of us let's go over to suma sudendra hello suma it's such a pleasure to meet you oh it's a pleasure to be here thank you very much suma So Suma it's nice that you're coming into this master class because I think you've reached a stage a, a pinnacle in your life where you've done so much and then you tell yourself what more and let me tell you master class is the platform where you can reach lakhs of audience where you can actually tell them not the accolades because people look at the accolades and they say that that's not for me that is for Suma no Suma the person and I would start from the very beginning as a young person your humble beginnings your background you come from a very conservative middle class family a south indian family and all south indian families you know how it i come from one of the south indian families as well so can you explain about the kind of upbringing you had really an honor to be here as you rightly said i came from a very conservative south indian family brahmin family you know how it was 40 what 40 50 55 years back it was very conservative but i had a very happy childhood i would say in spite of all that i had lots of friends we were always playing as all the conservative south indian brahmin families they would send their girls especially to learn something music something either vocal or instrumental or so anything dance was also not that popular at that time but music yes i remember all my friends coming to music class but giving up at certain stage so that's how i started my music i started when i was 6 i learned vocal classes for 2 years and then i went into veena but at 6 it would be too uh, early but no, i would suggest that it's the starts. right age because you imbibe a lot of things without giving much thought to it i think it's becomes part of you it's really good because you know many times uh, you don't have stage fear and you don't have you, you know the way you say open your mouth and sing and you know you follow the teacher much more uh, closely rather than having any individual thoughts about it but people say that oh you can't lick you know agute that means you know something will happen to your throat or something like no, that no, no, and you yeah. saying this it's very important. good it's important in fact uh, i have students right now who i started five because i find that it's very easy you don't put in lot of effort when you are young and you get it naturally it becomes part of you then you'll never give up so it's i always uh, in fact i advise all the parents if you are watching if you want start if you want to start any classes start early there's nothing like it without putting in much effort if they are interested they pick up and they learn yeah that's really nice to know because you know after you started at 5 then what happened you just continued with that i continued because uh, my i had a very strict mother uh, so she believed whatever you do you have to practice she, that was her goal so uh, saturday mornings uh, we all used to play on the road those days there was no traffic like the way it is in bangalore right now so all my friends would be playing and then she would allow me to go only if i practiced whatever i had learned that the means a lot not whole week whatever i knew 
like it was uh, like uh, five uh, compositions five varnams five krutis or it used to increase every month it would increase i would learn something new but i had to practice everything so i would get up early not to practice to finish the practice so i could go and play so that was the intention but it helped the discipline in me and i also had a very strict guru who was very very strict if i looked at the book now that's one thing with music if you learn music your memory power increases it has been proved now scientifically he would never allow me to look at the book and play if i looked at the open the book and played and he would say go back home practice and come back so that was the way my guru was and that was the way my mother was though i didn't appreciate both of them at that time right now sitting where i am i appreciate that very much excellent because you know when you have this kind of a discipline and you know you are sort of put in that path you have no other way to go but in that path and that's exactly what i would put many of the uh, you know parents today at least in this modern era they take it as a style kind of status to say that my child is playing the piano my child is playing the veena and they are doing vocal and some bollywood dancing etc and you know it is never serious because both the father and mother are busy in their work and the nannies are there sitting on their mobile phones and the poor child is looking at that piano and neither is the teacher interested what do you say for this uh first thing you will have to choose the right teacher who can be inspiring who makes the students feel that it's important to learn what you are learning i think that's a very important thing if you don't go to the see as the as population has grown and bangalore city has grown or every city for that matter uh, people just don't do their due diligence they just send them to one some school okay neighborhood i will send that won't work you need to know who is the good teacher who is the right institute or which is the right institution to go i think if there's an inspiring teacher for example uh there is a very nice teacher in our institution where we are teaching music at this point of time in indian music experience we have a very good mrudangam teacher who is so popular and the, the children have bonded with him it's very important that you bond with your music teacher or your art teacher it's not the same as you go to a regular school so that's important if that is taken care of i think the rest will fall in place another thing so i just want to know what do you advise parents who want their child to have a finger in every instrument and then expect the child to excel in all the instruments what is your uh, sort no, of advice to, such to just to master one thing it takes a lifetime and it's not enough i still think i i can explore so much more in veena and i can do so much more i i need time to do that so in every field it's like that once you do a deep dwell you need time you need focus you need to have discipline i don't know initially maybe you can put it put them into two three things and if they pick up any one of them well and i think the rest should take a back seat you can't do five different jack of all and uh, you know if you want to master you can't you can do two three things yes related yeah if you are learning for example vocal if you enhance it by learning mrudangam it you know it makes it opens your mind it opens your vision but if you put too many things a piano and a veena and uh, something else it doesn't work yeah. that's good so again getting back to your early life of course obviously you went to school and they were strict as well and then you were when did you actually get interested in the veena I was interested in veena all the time because it was part of my life. If you ask me from young age I have always learned veena and I didn't learn too many other things. So I was always interested in veena but then I took it up professionally by musician standards quite late I would say. I was 20 when I seriously considered music as my profession. Uh my mother maybe thought that I will only teach and do small time concerts is what maybe she didn't have the vision or uh, also i didn't come from a musician's family so maybe that was what everybody was thinking when i said i'll take music as a profession nobody ever thought that i would travel the way i traveled or i would perform the way i performed or i would make a tarangini veena at the end of it nobody maybe even i surprised myself but i always thought big that was for sure 
uh, when I was 20, I heard Chitti Babu in one of the concerts. I used to attend a lot of concerts as all my friends were attending and my family was attending because they were very much interested in music. I went to his concert and as luck would have it, as I was just talking to you, I told you, I believe that, you know, destiny, destiny plays a very big part. I do believe in that. I went to Shamla Bhave's house. Her sister Nirmala happens to be a very close friend of mine. So I went to their house and then Nirmala told uh, her sister, uh, Suma plays Veena very well and she asked me to play. I played and her mother was also there who was a very well-known musician at that time. And uh, there was a stunned silence after I finished. I, I thought that was that's how my knowledge was. And I thought, okay, I've done a bad job. So they're not saying anything. Then she turned around and said, Chamla, you're playing so well. What are you trying to do? I said, I'm looking for a job. Then she said, no. You should continue as a musician. I said, no, I'm not ready for a concert. I want to learn from Chitti Babu. Oh, just off the record. Uh, no, no, I had heard him the previous week and I thought I should, because I loved the way he approached the Veena like because he was sad. a, he was a revolutionary and he changed the way Veena sounded. He made that, uh, if you look back in the 20th century and see who made the Remarkable contribution, it was he. One of the biggest contribution was from him. The way he handled the veena, the sweet sound of veena which came out of his veena. His approach and his fingering techniques were very different from what others were playing till then. So, I wanted to go and learn from him. And then I had no clue that Shamla was a good friend of Chitti Babu's. So she picked up the phone, called him and he said, come tomorrow. And then you won't so you believe it. Uh, no, we just Chennai. both, uh, Shamla came with me and introduced me to him and I played Where? In Chennai. Chennai. We, wow. went to, we took a train and went to Chennai, Chennai and I played for him and that changed my life. And uh, then uh, later, he accepted me immediately, he asked me to play. Then much later, three years later, then he told me, he looked at me and then he thought, okay, here's a very glamorous woman who is a girl who has come to learn from him. And then I was highly, I had done my master's in uh, history by then. So he thought, he, he thought to himself, I believe, she won't last. She'll just come here for the heck of it. The way I looked at, that was my thing. Because I didn't come from a musician's family, I didn't dress like a musician, I didn't look like a musician, everybody thought I won't last. You didn't look like a musician. Do uh, musicians have a... Yeah, till then, yeah, they, they had typically very conservative looks and I was far from being... Though I came from a very conservative background, I was anything conservative in my dressing or my in attitude and in my way, the way, you know, I talked or I, I approached life. Okay, and then what did you say after that? He taught me and he, you know, this he shared it much later when I turned pro. Then I was very serious. I was putting in eight, nine hours of practice and I just got married. Everybody was thinking at that time that I was quite crazy because I'd married this uh, doctor who, was, who had already started his practice. Those days he was doing very well. And then everybody thought I, sh I should enjoy life. I think he's doing well now as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, but then they thought I should just enjoy that and not put myself through the hard work Dr. which Sudhindra. I was doing. Oh, Dr. Sudhindra, yes. yeah. <laughs> For the whole week. So, but uh, it was pretty hard, not financially I wouldn't say, but it's a very emotionally and uh, physically it was a very hard work because uh, putting in that kind of practice takes away, takes a lot out of you. So if you ask me the first 10 years of those li that life, I don't remember anything because I was always jumping from one to another and I also got plenty of opportunities to perform. So the world opened up for me and also for me the another big thing which happened was I saw my guru Chitti Babu. My first exposure to uh, the music world was through him. Through his eyes I was because I was accompanying him to concerts and he used to get he was like a big star when I went to him. I was the only student he had at that time because he had no time to teach. So, I was thinking life is like that for musician because I had not seen anything. I had no experience. So, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing to start. Think that you should reach there. I think it's a very... 
how was it to get into a man's world and conquer the man's world because in those days getting into this kind of instruments etc it was considered parampara and you know khandani and therefore you no know, you either have to have a big name behind you or you have to be a male i but had then, a big name behind me my guru yes, so i then <laughs> you when you started off before chitti baba honestly i did not have so much of a, uh what would i call the uh, you know a gender bias i really did not face because i was but i was making news for a lot of wrong things also because they thought some educated girl who was not into in the music family was making a name so people were curious to see i was very different from a regular musician that uh, itself gave you a lot of publicity The, in a way. way i remember for one of the concerts because i used to drive the car nobody was driving their own car and going to a concert but i never thought it was something which should not be done i did a lot of things which were not acceptable, acceptable at that time but then i never knew anything better than it is better that you didn't know <laughs> because then you wouldn't have you know yeah. broken the glass ceiling <laughs> and gone forward yeah yeah but it's uh, good that you did that because you know even this tarangini uh, veena that you are talking about Tell my viewers what is this Tarangini Veena, and you've painted it. Yeah, that's the thing that you've left behind for legacy. Yeah, the one of my proudest moments and proudest achievements in my life is Tarangini Veena. If you ask me what I will leave behind, that, that is what definitely is. the Tarangini Veena. I I started traveling in uh, the eighties. Uh, I think I, again I was one of the first one to travel so much so widely with the Veena. it was very difficult to carry the saraswati veena and then i have broken it on every single trip and how first, do you manage first, first time i cried second time i started repairing by the third trip i had gone to the veena maker and learned to repair it and i started repairing it i was quite you know i sat with him and learned how to repair the veena and i had to do it if i had to perform i had to do all this through these tours i always felt that i should improve the veena because uh, i also started playing a lot of fusion music around the same time and i used to play with lot of guitarists and uh, other instruments every 3 months when i went back to another concert i would have my guitarist have a fancy new instrument and he would use it here i was sitting with a 300 year old veena refusing to change anything so that kept me thinking and then i was also doing my phd meanwhile i was doing simultaneously many things at that point of time since i had a late start at 20 i had to reach where my colleagues were but i reached i'm happy to say that i reached where my colleagues were there in 5 years they had performed for 15 years but i had performed for 5 years but i was there along with them it i was able to do that but i also went to after i finished learning not finished after i finished Three years with uh, Chitti Babu, I went to many other gurus, picked up a lot of things, a lot of uh, nuances, subtleties. The more subtleties you learn in Carnatic music, the more layered your music becomes. I can sit here and talk about all this, but uh, when I started, I didn't understand. It's very important that you learn classical music and you practice it over and over again and make it layered and layered. That makes your music. much more appealing to everybody so you're saying that even if you do instrumentally it's always nice to have some carnatic classical music okay. learning vocal so that it helps you with your instrument as that well that is because the way carnatic music is structured uh, for a common person if i have to explain it's very composition based so there are a lot of uh, lyrics in the music sahitya is what we call so that has to reach out to people you need to understand vocal music because uh, we don't have a separate instrumental music written material in carnatic music which is there in hindustani music in carnatic music it is not there so you have to follow vocal tradition and everybody it's good that if you learn vocal music it helps you to grow as a musician you invariably start singing because you need to understand the compositions and there are some beautiful compositions in carnatic music and those people who even sing these light uh, music numbers sing it much better like for example even shankar mahadevan like you say if they've had some training in um, no shankar mahadevan is very well trained, trained. in carnatic that's music that's what i'm saying yeah, you can do a, a better job no. i always believe that even if you want to 
venture into different genres of music like uh, fusion, mm -hmm. the world music, or even the you know the lighter music and the film music. If it's you nice have to the, have a base. Na nice to have a solid base of uh, some music, either Carnatic, Hindustani, or even Western music. That gives you that uh, edge over others or a hold. To, yeah, hold an edge to perform better. That's really good because you know it's important. Many people think that they just take a karaoke and then just start singing. No, no. If you have but a good voice, you have a good equipment. Yes. Uh, but you have to sharpen it. You know, sharpen it by understanding. Even if you have, a, see, it's like voice. You also have to have good fingers to play instruments. Not everybody can pick up instruments easily, but that's only a inherent talent. But that has to be nicely, you know, chiseled. You have to work towards it. The chiseling takes time. Yes, I think that is important. Art needs the heart. Mm -hmm. Very important to see that it yes, really and, comes uh, out. It's not uh, just uh, as glamorous as it looks. It's very hard. A lot of hard work goes behind it. A lot of hard work. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what the public need to understand. Mm -hmm. See, uh, at what age did you get married? It all happened simultaneously. I went to Chennai. I got married and I decided to do uh, music as my profession at 20. All the three, I did it together. So it was crazy times. I also had children. In the next three years, I had two children, two daughters. I don't remember anything because I was jumping from one to another, trying to be a good mother, trying to do a lot of things, being a good wife. And then I don't know whether I've been a good wife. I love to ask. I love to ask Dr. Sudhi. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, having said this, you know, for a woman, to be able to take this role and put multiple hats, one or the other will suffer. Definitely, yeah. In an artist's life, it's definitely, I was at an advantage. I will openly accept it. The sacrifices have come from my husband and my children right now and my mother. My mother was a pillar of strength through my journey. Because when you start as a performing artist, you have to travel a lot. You can't perform in Bangalore all the time. And I was traveling very often. So it was very difficult for me to leave young children with just the staff. You know, you, you can't go peacefully and perform. So my mother rallied around me. Their sacrifices came from them, definitely. Do you ever feel that uh, you tell your mother, you know, thanks for actually helping me? And do your children ever tell you, Mom, where were you when we were zero years? And uh, why did you leave us or something like that? Do they have that kind of thing? They have said, uh, why, where were you? They have said, but uh, I don't think they missed me. I came back and I was trying to be doing extra, over extra nice and extra, doing everything extra. Yeah, they, they did not miss me so much because my mother was their mother. When she died, uh, I remember my elder daughter telling me she was really depressed and crying a lot. And then I, at some point, I turned around and told her, I need space because it's my mother who has died. And she turned around and told me, no, you didn't. Uh, we also lost a mother, she said. So that, that must have hurt you a lot. <laughs> no, it didn't. Because my mother was very sweet. And then I was very thankful to her because how many people have that advantage of her? I always have looked at the positive side. I, I've been very close to both my daughters. I'm sure they would have missed, they didn't have a normal kind of a childhood. Maybe they did not have, but I think they were okay with that. That's what I think. You, I don't know. How does your husband cope with that? You know, jetting off from one place to another place. He was very busy, so maybe he was able to uh, cope, know, with it. cope with it because of because that. And also he was, uh, he was, uh, he's been very supportive. He always wanted me to be a musician and a good musician at that because he's, be, he's very critical. He and my mom's mom both have been very... So he is also a lover of music? Uh, they, he loves music. He loves music? Yeah, he loves music. Has he come for any of your concerts? Big concerts, yes, but not always. Yeah, uh, some of the big concerts, he's, he's always been there. Yeah. When I got my Kalai Mamani, for example, I'm the only Karnataka artist who has received the Kalai Mamani, which is the highest award of Tamil Nadu. And I got it very early in my career, in 90, uh, 1992. I was 12, 13 years into my career and I got it. So he was very much was there. there. Yeah, he was there. That was such a proud moment. I'm sure your parents would have loved it, isn't it? Yeah, my mother. I lost my father very early. My mother died uh, in 1999. Till then she was with, she was very supportive of me. 
and my brother, family. sister in law, the family has been uh, very supportive. What very does your support. brother do? My brother is an engineer, so he's into construction. And, uh, so not into music. Not into music at all. Okay. Mm. So you are the first generation music. Yeah. Huh? Mm. Though your mother did some vocal music. Yeah, she was uh, interested. Uh, as uh, she had learned those days, they used to teach what is called a gamaka format yeah. of music. She had done her exams and she was very good at it. Yeah, mm. that's the reason why she used to ask you to yeah. do your training yeah. in the morning. Uh, yeah. Huh? No, basically a strict person. I think she wanted me to study well. Whatever I wanted to do, she had to you had to do the best. That's what was her motive. That mm. is something which is good. But that is what has actually brought that discipline into you. Yeah, very into true, your very music. True, yeah. Because you know, once it is put inside you at a very early age, it just continues. So then you also received our highest award, no? the Kala Academy Award here. The Sangeet Nath Sangeet, Academy. Uh, yeah. That's the national award. The national awards. Yeah. That's a validation for, for any your, musician. Any yeah. musician. So how did you feel when you got that? Very happy. Uh, the thing is, I've also been in the administrative part of uh, music from the beginning of my career. In the 80s, I joined Chaudaya and I, I've been the secretary for uh, 30 years and then I was the president. Uh, even now, I'm on the committee. So I've been involved in the cultural activities part of it. Uh, though I've been a practicing musician, so I've, had, I've sat on both sides. And uh, from 2008 to I think nine. I, I was on the SNA committee in the central government, central Sangeet Narka Academy. Uh, so I was nominated at that time only. But unfortunately, I got into the committee and then I could not accept the award because five year it's a more than a five year tenure. So I had to wait it out. And I'm very happy that you have validation and you you, be, you feel responsible. More absolutely, responsible. Absolutely. I think uh, that's how I look at awards because I've sat on both sides. I know what goes behind also. I think uh, more than uh, looking at awards, I think you should always look at how you can become a better musician, how you can acquire knowledge, you know, how you can and how you can impart knowledge, impart knowledge and how you can perform. In my, in our case, a performance. How you can improve from every performance is like a examination. So how you improve from one to another is a very important aspect. For me, that's more important than just going behind the awards. It will all come. So viewers, I'm not going to disappoint you. I know what you're thinking as to why Suma is not giving her performance. I was also thinking that, but it's going to be soon here. Suma, they're waiting for your performance and so am I. Thank you. I'll be just doing a Shad Tanam in Ragamalika and I'll conclude that with Krishnani Veganevaru in Raga Eman for all of you. I'm sure you'll enjoy this because it's a very popular composition. Thank you. 
That's more important than just going behind the watch. 